फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट सर द माउंटिंग गैलोपिंग पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर मेनली फाइनांस्ड नोट आउट ऑफ रियल रिसोर्सिस बट आउट ऑफ पब्लिक डेट्स और बोरोइंग्स क्रिएट्स एन इंटरनल डेट ट्रैप एंड दैट कैन बी ओनली मैच्ड और मेट बाय सीइंग दैट वॉट एवर मनी इट स्पेंट इज स्पेंट प्रोडक्टिवली एंड ऑल द मनी दैट इज नॉट बींग स्पेंट प्रोडक्टिवली इज कट आउट देयर इज कंट्रोल ओन एक्सपेंडिचर आई थिंक दिस मकैनिज्म विल बी मच मोर इफेक्टिव वेन पुट इन ऑपरेशन एंड इट कुड control the deficit that the country has experienced now sir the objective and philosophy of the plan squarely put as the nehruvian model of growth with social justice based on modernization our economy has progressed on these lines and the entire industrial sector is in the midst of a new industrial revolution this new industrial revolution formulated by the ideas of the prime minister is that there should be increased productivity and efficiency it also reflects the modern management technique all these are the qualitative aspects of the new industrial revolution that is ushered into the country as the second industrial revolution first industrial revolution was ushered in by pandit jawahar lal nehru when the second plan was introduced whose main goals were public sector building up capital good agricultural production and self reliance of the economy the country has progressed in this direction and india is now one of the most industrialized economies but there are large gaps and prime minister has introduced the second phase of the industrial revolution with its emphasis on modernization efficiency and productivity this applies not only to public sector but it also applies to the new technologies that are being used in the agriculture sector the breakthrough in agricultural production is concentrated only in certain region while there is great resurgence in certain areas of the country their areas have difficulties only a certain class of people are benefiting because of the agricultural development water management technological management and other inputs used in agriculture are costly and the result is that the cost of production in agriculture is as costly as the industrial production therefore by introducing the new management revolution in agriculture and industry there will be more and more emphasis on modernization efficiency and getting the best results out of the investment and 
I only like to point out that it must be made much more broad based in the sphere of agriculture. It must be extended to other areas where it is not existing now. For example, we should put in more efforts in northeast and central areas. It must get out of the regional trap and spread to the whole country. In addition, one agricultural products must be less costly. There was a time when we could not export even though we had produced more. We could not export because we had to subsidize our agricultural products. Reducing the cost will improve our exports also. This is the techno-economic articulation as presented by the Prime Minister in his budget. This is the philosophy of the budget on which he focuses attention. He charters a new path that the budget will be pro-poor, growth-oriented and this budget will be for equal distribution and social justice. The whole package of these specific measures is oriented towards this goal. The budget should be non-inflationary and with tight control on expenditure we should try to get the best out of every rupee that we spend. This is the philosophy that he has placed before the country and he wants to take the country on the road to prosperity. Similarly, the structure, the economic architecture is no less profound. If you see the measures, if you take the demand and supply management, the need is to curb the aggregate demand. There is a massive jump in internal debt that is from rupees 85 crores to rupees 85,000 crores. During the coming year, the interest charges alone come to 27% of the known plan expenditure. Defense and other things like subsidies take it to 70% of the known plan expenditure. It is a very challenging and daunting task how to restore the balance and put a curb on the mounting internal debt so that we may not be faced with the internal debt trap. India has successfully avoided any kind of debt trap external debt trap. Actually, if you see the report of the World Bank or the International Monetary Fund or any other organization, India is a shining example of development compared to any other developing country. The budget strikes a new path, a Gandhian approach, if I may say so, in bringing about simplicity in administration by giving up a 11 ostentation projects, all ostentatious way of 
spending in governing the country this is being reintroduced in this budget which has removed all the frills and ostentations by cutting down and postponing all the slow moving projects and replacing them with fast moving ones large funds are allocated for the rural poverty alleviation through increase in productive employment stop